Welcome to week 17. During this video we will be reading the passage from day one, which is in our book, page 345 to 351. After we're done reading this together, you can go to number two, which is answering the following questions on page 351, numbers one, two, four, five, and six. After that, you'll answer the following questions on a sheet of paper. A. What animal did the first settlers in Norway follow? B. What was the name of the Viking who possibly discovered North America before Columbus? And C. What type of building has not been built in Helsinki even though there are 900,000 people living there? So once we've gone through the reading, hopefully um, the answer to these stick out to you and you can write that on your paper and turn it into your teacher. Tomorrow, day two, you will read pages 353 to 57 on your own and do the worksheet for sections one and two. On day three, you will do one through 10, the key terms on 360 and the main idea 11 through 20, also on page 360. On day four, there is some review IXL you can do down here. And then you also have a test on day four. So let's get right into the reading. Today we are gonna be reading about Norway, Sweden, and Finland. So turn in your books to page 345 and we will start reading. The region of Northern Europe, also known as Scandinavia, is made up of five countries, Norway, Sweden, Finland, Denmark, and Iceland. People in these countries have standards of living that are among the highest in the world, which means they are very rich. Norway. Jutting out to sea on the Scandinavian peninsula lie Norway and Sweden. Along the peninsula's western edge runs the Kingdom of Norway. Its long, jagged coastline on the Atlantic Ocean includes many fjords, or steep sided valleys that are inlets of the sea. Thousands of years ago, glaciers slowly moved across the mountainous land. On the sea coast, they carved deep, narrow valleys. When the glacial ice eventually melted, the sea level rose. Water then flooded the valleys, producing the fjords. Today, the fjords provide Norway with sheltered harbors and beautiful scenery popular with tourists. So if you see the picture up there, that is a picture of a fjord. Very beautiful. Next page. The glacier-covered Chulun Mountains tower over northern Norway. Rivers rushing down from mountains provide hydroelectricity to farms, factories, and homes. Only 3% of Norway is suitable for agriculture, much of it in the southeast. Forests cover about 25% of Norway. Acid rain is slowly destroying many forested areas, however. Turn to page 362 to learn more about acid rain and its effects on Northern Europe. About one third of Norway lies north of the Arctic Circle. This rugged area is often called land of the midnight sun. Here, the sun never sets in the midsummer months. In the midwinter months, the sun never rises. Turn to page 352 to find out more about the midnight sun. Norway's far northern location results in a mostly cold climate. However, a mild climate is found along Norway's southern and western coasts, even though this area lies at the same latitude as Alaska. Winds blowing over the North Atlantic current raise temperatures on the land. Most of Norway's 4.5 million people live in the south, within 10 miles of the coast, chiefly in urban areas. Oslo, the capital and largest city, lies at the end of a fjord on the southeastern coast. Next page. Norway's economy. Norway is a wealthy country, partly because of the seas that lap its coast. Norway began to extract oil and natural gas 
from beneath the North Sea in the 1970s. Today, it is the world's second largest oil exporter after Saudi Arabia. The seas themselves provide an important export, fish. The city of Bergen is a major port and fish market. Warm ocean currents keep Bergen and most of Norway's other harbors ice-free all year. Norway's large fleet of commercial ships and cruise ships carries cargo and people around the world. Norway's history and people. Norway's first settlers arrived about 10,000 years ago. They followed herds of reindeer that migrated north as the glaciers retreated. During the 80s, 700s, and 800s, Norway's Vikings, seeking land and adventure, raided and traded throughout Europe. They often founded settlements along the way. You can still see unique staved churches that reflect traditions of the Vikings, as well as early Christian traditions. These churches are among the world's oldest wooden buildings. About AD 1000, a Viking named Leif Erikson became possibly the first European to explore North American's coast. You'll remember Leif Erikson from last week's video. Hinga binga bargain. This is Ola. Next page. In 1387, Norway came under the rule of tiny but much more populous Denmark to the south, a union that lasted more than 400 years. Then, in 1814, the people of Norway came under the rule of Sweden to the east. In 1905, Norway finally became independent. The country is a constitutional monarchy and a parliamentary democracy, like the United Kingdom. A king or queen is head of state but a prime minister and other elected officials actually run the government. Norway, with its profitable farming, fishing, and oil industries, is one of Europe's most prosperous nations. Wanting to keep control of its economy, Norway voted not to join the European Union in 1994. EU membership is still hotly debated, however. The people of Norway share many cultural characteristics with their Scandinavian neighbors in Sweden, Denmark, and Iceland. The Norwegian language is closely related to their languages. Most Norwegians follow the Protestant Lutheran faith. This form of Christianity came from Germany in the 1500s. The people of Norway hold on to cultural traditions. You might see them wearing elaborate folk dresses at weddings and village festivals. Norwegians are a very modern people, though. Three-fourths of the population live in cities, and more than one-third owns computers. When they are not typing on keyboards, they may be skiing or riding snowmobiles. The Sami are an ethnic group that live north of the Arctic Circle in Finland, Sweden, and Norway. In the past, the Sami herded reindeer and constantly moved. Today, many work in mining and forestry. So in this picture here, you'll see there's the traditional clothes that many Norwegians wear in their festivals. Next page. Next page. Sweden is almost the size of California. Inland snow-covered mountains, adjoined forested highlands, fertile lowlands, and then coastal scurries, or rocky islands. Sweden's long coastline touches the Baltic Sea, the Gulf of Bothnia, and a narrow arm of the North Sea. The country has about 100,000 lakes, most carved by glaciers. Sweden is colder than Norway. Why is that? Sweden's mountains block the warm winds of the North Atlantic Current. This causes northern Sweden to have cool summers and cold winters. Many coastal ports are frozen for at least a couple months during the winter. The North Atlantic winds provide the far south with a milder climate. Sweden's economy. Sweden is a wealthy industrial country. 
Its prosperity comes from an abundant natural resources. Sweden's powerful northern rivers produce hydroelectricity. Iron ore deposits in the Arctic region supply steel to factories that manufacture cars, machinery, and ships. Timber from Sweden's forest provides lumber for furniture and wood, wood pulp for newsprint. Exports include machinery, motor vehicles, paper products, wood, and electronic products. Only about 8% of Sweden's land can be used for farming. Swedish farmers have developed efficient ways to grow crops, and their farms supply most of the nation's food. Roads and railroads crisscross the southern region. In 2000, a bridge and tunnel system was opened, joining Sweden and Denmark for the first time. This system is 10 miles long and connects Malmö, Sweden with Copenhagen, Denmark's capital. Sweden's history and people. The Vikings had an important role in Sweden's early history. In 1523, Sweden became a separate kingdom apart from Denmark and Norway. King Gustav Vasa turned Sweden from a Roman Catholic to a Protestant country. During the 1600s, Swedish armies conquered much of the area around the Baltic Sea. Sweden's agricultural economy suffered during the 1800s. Many Swedes emigrated or moved to other countries. About one million Swedes settled in the United States. A turnaround began during the late 1800s. Cities and factories grew and a new middle class arose. Sweden's economic wealth enabled it to become a welfare state. A welfare state is a country that uses tax money to help people who are sick, needy, jobless, or retired. Since the 1970s, economic slowdowns and high taxes have limited government spending for welfare. To help its economic growth, Sweden joined the European Union in 1995. The country is a parliamentary democracy. Most of Sweden's almost 9 million people live in cities in the southern lowlands. Stockholm is the country's capital and largest city. Most of the people are Swedes and speak Swedish. Sweden's high standard of living has attracted more than 1 million immigrants from nearby Norway and Denmark and distant Turkey and Vietnam. So in this picture, you'll see what the book called scurries or little islands that are very rocky. So you'll also remember we talked about the welfare state reading about Sweden. Now, the people of Sweden don't have to pay for um, the hospital if they go to the hospital, doctor's appointments, if they need to take time off of work for a family emergency, but about half of their paycheck goes to the government. So if they make $1,000 in a week, the government takes $500 of that, so they'd only be left with half of what they make. They also talked in this chapter about an emigrant versus an immigrant. Someone's called an emigrant when they leave a country, and they're called an immigrant when they go into another country. All right, next page, Finland. Finland lies on a flat plateau broken by small hills and valleys. Its inland areas hold some of the largest unspoiled wilderness in Europe. Thick forests cover two-thirds of the country. Thousands of glacier-formed lakes dot the countryside. If you include marshes and bogs, water covers 10% of Finland's land area. Finland can get extremely cold in the winter. Like Sweden, it lies far from the warm North Atlantic current. As a result, the country has humid continental and subarctic climates. Finland's economy. Most of Finland's wealth comes from its huge forests of spruce, pine, and birch trees. Paper and wood production are important exports. As in Ireland, peat bogs provide fuel. Rivers flowing from Finland's abundant lakes yield hydroelectric power. The Finns have long traded with neighboring Russia. Now they are expanding their markets in the West. In 1995, Finland joined the European Union. 
In recent years, heavy industry or manufactured goods such as machinery have driven Finland's economy. The Finns are also leaders in the electronic communications industry. In fact, Finns as young as 10 years old carry mobile phones to school. Finland's best farmland lies in the southwestern part of the country. Farmers raise livestock for dairy products and meat, meeting all of the country's needs. They also grow potatoes and grains. Because of the short growing season, however, Finland must import fruits and vegetables from other countries. In this picture, you'll see... Um, in the picture above, you'll see some tractors that are being made in Finland. Finland's History and People The ancestors of the Finns settled in the region thousands of years ago. These people probably came from what is now Siberia in eastern Russia. As a result, Finnish language and culture differ from those of Finland's Scandinavian neighbors. By the AD 1000s, Swedish Vikings controlled Finland. For almost 700 years, Finland was part of Sweden. Some Swedish customs remain in the culture. Along with the Finnish, Swedish is an official language. In 1809, the Finns came under the control of Russia. During the 1800s, nationalism, or the desire for an independent country, swept through Finland. With the fall of the Russian Empire in 1917, Finland declared its independence as a republic. Finland then became, and remains, a parliamentary democracy. A president serves as head of state, and a prime minister runs the government. Most of Finland's more than 5 million people live in towns and cities on the southern coast. Helsinki, the capital, has over 900,000 people, but the city has still kept a small town atmosphere. Helsinki, for example, has no high-rise buildings. Most Finns belong to the Finnish ethnic group. Their language, Finnish, is an Uralic language. Because of centuries under Swedish rule, most Finns practice the Protestant Lutheran faith. With snow on the ground for about half a year, Finns enjoy cross-country skiing. After outdoor activities, many Finns enjoy relaxing in saunas, or wooden rooms heated by water sizzling on hot stones. So someone famous from Norway is Edvard Grieg. He was a composer of music, so he wrote music, and he was also a famous piano player. One of his most famous songs is In the Hall of the Mountain King, so let's listen to that.
Norway has also been used for their beautiful scenery and lots of movies and films. Thor Ragnarok was mostly filmed in Norway um, in a town called Oda in southern Norway. I think we can look around in that town if we go to Google Maps. Oh, this is another island. Uh, Google Maps won't let you look around on this island, but if you click on the pictures, you can see a very beautiful location. The mountains and the very small, like, fishing towns. These were maybe somewhere in the movie. Thor. And the other town that was used, this is Oda, I think, this link. So we can drag our little person and take a look. Where do we want to go? Maybe here? So here is a street view of a place in Norway. Or maybe some filming of a movie took place. So if we get the chance to go on Google Maps and just take a walk around, it's really neat. Oh, here's a forest, like kind of on the side of a mountain, but also in the forest. So very beautiful countryside. So that's our introduction to Norway, Sweden, and Finland. Be sure to check in each day to see what your assignments are and make sure you're filling those out and checking them off as you go along. And I will see you next week. Let's travel around the world, through ocean, sea, and land. We don't have 80 days, but oh, a trip it will be grand. We start to North America, USA, and Canada. But Perth, it's cold down south, it's hot, more continents, there are a lot. Let's travel around the world. South America, it's plain to see. It's south of North America, there's mountains, rivers, and lots of trees. Africa is home to the deserts and the Nile River. Look to the peninsula, I hope you're a good swimmer. Asia is the biggest continent of all. Frozen tundra up in Russia, islands I can't name them all. Live down under, Australia has a desert plain, but it's all water. The coral reefs are reaching. The last one is Antarctica. It's ice, ice, ice. There's mountains and there's valleys, but it's ice, ice, ice. We made it from the world, through ocean, land, and sea. We went where fast it was a blast. Let's stop and have some tea.